everyone, welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode on Freddles, we're looking at tight Freddles. Now, some people in the UK only use the term Freddle to mean tight Freddles, which I'm now going to show you. But Freddles came from Canada and the US, and they use them to mean any form of pull through. So if you hear someone say, do a pull in, just confirm they actually want you to do the long version, which I've seen, which is the the long straight jump out there and if they say do a freddle they might mean what I'm about to show you and you just need to double check that but that, that is pure terminology thing. The tight freddle is different to what we've just been doing because we're not wanting our dog to jump an extension. So on the freddles we've shown in the previous videos we're asking our dog to come to jump long and they're slicing this pole. So if you remember you've watched the previous videos where we described, described slicing they're in extension and we're asking them either to go over in that direction or we might be asking them to do a wing wrap here and turn and come this direction. In a tight freddle we want to ask them to come to an obstacle that is much nearer. So in this instance we'd be asking them to come here and instead of going long we want them to come in this direction. This is a different manoeuvre to what I've just shown you because the dog is doing something different. So if you remember we had our videos about collection and versus extension and our dog needs to know when it's in collection and when it needs to be an extension it's important because if we don't differentiate that for the dog then we get a situation where either the dog is always in extension and is rubbish at turning or the dog becomes hesitant in extension and is always questioning it so i wouldn't come to this and tell her to come because calm means come to the back of the jump and take it long you remember, I did offer that cue of her so that she knew when she was coming over if she got to turn. But though she was having to turn, she still was having to take this jump long. So she had to take it long in extension and then turn. So though there was that element of collection, good girl, it still made sense on the same cue. So for a tight freddle, it's best to have a different cue. What some people do is they try and combine cues. So they might say, come wrap, wrap, or something like that to try and vary up. It's much simpler to just have a completely different cue. My different cue for this specific behavior is in-in. And in-in literally only means you're coming round and you're taking this wing tight. You're gonna end up over there and not going long, good girl. So I'll show you what this looks like. Now I am going to cue her to turn a bit tighter because of my body language. So I'm going to ask her to do a wing wrap here and then my in in. Now we're not quite as good as these as others, so we shall see what happens. Okay. Loop, loop, in, 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 in. Good girl. Did you see how she slowed herself down and collected? These sort of freddles you don't see as often as the, the long ones, as I call them. So tight freddles are not so common, but they are a skill you need to know. I would say teach the long freddle first, then teach this one. You can actually teach it as if it's a completely separate behavior. So though we're calling them both freddles, for the dog, they can perceive it as a completely different behavior and they don't have to even think to themselves, well, they're both types of freddle. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to the dog. They just understand that in in means I'm turning tightly. Did you see that for the in in, I took, got back the off arm. So when we were talking about the, the freddles going along, I was using it all on one arm. Because I'm doing this as an in-in, and because I want the dog to turn tightly, I brought in back in this arm. There is a reason for this beyond just the fact that it is a different handling manoeuvre, so it does make it much clearer for the dog. So let's do that again. So loop, loop, in, in, in. Good girl. So I used that arm like the check mark we used to use when we were doing a normal freddle, but it meant just this manoeuvre. Some people call this stirring the pot because it looks like you're stirring the pot. The other reason I do this is because in the majority of cases with a tight freddle, in fact, probably all of them, you are affecting a rear cross with them. So. When I did the long freddle, I was staying on the same side as my dog. The dog was on the drive arm and then coming over. We weren't changing sides, me as the handler. But on this one, the reason I'm asking 
for this tight freddle is partly because I'm going to perform a rear cross on her. So what I mean by that, and you hopefully have looked at the videos explaining rear cross, she is coming past me and she's coming over that jump and I am crossing behind her, rear crossing, and I'm changing arms. Because she's starting on this arm, my drive arm, she's switching to the off arm, and then I'm coming over here. Now, there are variants on that, and you might not always want to do that, but in general, when you're doing these sort of in-ins, you are looking at doing a, performing a rear cross. So I'll show you that, so hopefully you can see what I mean. Loop, loop, in, 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 in. Now look where I am. I've moved. I have rear crossed my dog. I'm on the different side. I wasn't on that side when I was doing that form of freddle. Good girl. And that is why I'm using this off arm, because it makes sense, because I've changed arms. But there are variations on this, because they always are, are they not? The variation on this is when we want the dog to do a tight freddle on the same arm. So imagine I've got a tunnel entrance here. My dog is coming from that jump. It needs to take the back of this jump as an in-in and it needs to come in the tunnel. If I was to send them long, I might potentially gain a couple of cents because they're in extension, but then they're going to have to really work to get this tunnel entrance. So logically, it makes better sense for my dog to do a wing wrap on this one then go in the tunnel. This is where I'm using my in-ins because I'm asking my dog to pull in, but do a tight, tight turn. So my in-in cue can mean turn back on yourself, but it can also mean a completely tight turn, 360 degrees. This is an instance where I always used to do it on a single arm. So I'll show you what that looks like. Just like with this arm we just did. Loop, loop, in, 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 in. Okay, if you think about it, it's almost a front cross, but reversed because you bring him on that arm and then it changes to that arm. So you're, you're flipping arms. That is a very valid version of doing that particular move. And certainly up until the last year, I was doing that move. But there is another version, always is. And that's the single arm version. And this is very much similar, why we're doing it similar to the long freddles is it's quicker and faster for the handler and in this version I won't bring up this arm I'll stay on my drive arm and I'll ask my dog to do the the maneuver on one arm good girl so in this stage we are relying to a degree on our verbals because this maneuver can almost look like the other type of freddle we did ready ready loop loop in, 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 in. Good girl. So you see, she did it all on one arm. For me, this didn't mean I hadn't got to keep crossing my arms and faffing around. And once we're good at these, we still need a bit of work on these. Good girl. It means I could get right ahead of her. I could really be moving on to wherever I needed to be next. And this is why we all adapt our handling is because we want to have that advantage as the handler of being able to get on with where we need to be next to help our dog. So that, in essence, is your tight freddle. So the way you're going to see it in two ways. So you're either going to see it as a rear cross, where you want to flick back on your dog, or you're going to do it as a tight maneuver on one arm to get somewhere else. It's something that, once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite straightforward. It looks quite jazzy when you see someone doing it, but it is something that isn't relatively straightforward to teach if you consider it as two different behaviours. I know it's a lot to take in, and this freddle business can sound very complicated, but work through the videos, keep going back to them, referring to them, and once you hit the ground and you start learning these moves, it will begin to make sense, I promise. I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video, and if you have, you might also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Lots of new videos coming out all the time, and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you all again very, very soon.